Okay, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, Adams 2014 release webinar. My name is Ejin Fan, and I'm the product marketing manager for Adams. So today, Anthony and uh, Anthony Gugino at Ingo Porsche will be uh, today's presenter. Anthony is our um, uh, product designer for Adams, and Ingo is the product development manager for Adams Car. Also joining us in a Q&A session, we will have um, Jose Ortiz. Jose is the Adams Software Development Manager. Okay, uh, so today's presentation will take about 35 minutes. And after that, we will have a 10 minutes Q&A. So if you have any question uh, about the presentation itself or about Adams, you can type the question down in the Q&A window. We will try to have them answered at the end of today's webinar. Uh, okay, at this point, I'm going to turn the presenter to pass it to Anthony. Yeah, thanks, Eugen. So, I'll get started uh, by talking about the native nonlinear FE part. So, this is a wholly Adams native element, a new, new set of objects, really, a number of them, for modeling geometrically nonlinear parts that, uh, uh, that have a distributed mass. So this has 2D and 3D beam formulation, so it's useful for beam-like structures. And as I mentioned, it has distributed mass, which is how it primarily differs from the forced element that we call a beam or a field or, uh, you know, sometimes folks use bushings to connect a bunch of rigid, uh, rigid parts together to try to approximate some of this kind of behavior. And the other nice thing uh, about this part is that it comes with a distributed load that we call the FE load. And so that distributed load makes it very easy to write force functions that vary along the length, uh, center line length, uh, normalized to 0 to 1, which we call S. So you could say, you know, a load that varies uh, as S increases or decreases or some other function of S. Also, you can uh, model distributed loads that vary as uh, functions of velocity or acceleration along S as well. Um, this is obviously very important for large deformation parts in multi-body analyses in, in atoms. Uh, you know, it comes with some advantages over some of the other methods of doing this. You know, the discrete flexible link approach with beam forces uh, or field force elements uh, works pretty well, but it can be uh, cumbersome to do, with, particularly for making modifications uh, automatically and parameterizing properly, especially if you're not uh, uh, very skilled with the Adams uh, view command language and macro language. Uh, another common approach to solving these same kinds of problems that people do today uh, is to use a number of linear flex bodies, M and F based flex bodies, and uh, M forces for distributed loads and connecting those all together. And that can be uh, uh, certainly uh, slower to handle in pre processing and modification. And to some extent, those results will have seams in them as well, where there are rigid bodies, uh, particularly if you're doing contacts and things like that, where there's uh, you know seams in the actual or connection points between the parts. A lot of applications for this, really anywhere geometric nonlinearity is, uh, is, is called for. Um, you know, uh, stabilizer bars in the car, uh, cables, uh, belt systems, things like that. Uh, any sort of beam-like structure elements could be good uh, could be good applications here. One such example here is a, uh, a cable, uh, overhead cable tram, a public transit vehicle here going down the street. Uh, so it's highlighted that we do have contact with rigid bodies to the FE part, and the FE part also supports contact with other FE parts. In terms of a workflow in building this, this little slide here has a nice little illustration on the uh, stabilizer bar within, a, uh, within an Adams view model dimension where you're defining what the center line is, what is the you know, underformed center line position of the part that you want, and then you would essentially mesh that with a series of nodes, a series of points. Uh, you define the key points at it, and each of those points you can define a section, and those sections, those cross sections, define the you know, area properties, area inertias. Uh, that the CAT formulation will use, and each of those sections can be different. So you could have, for example, uh, non-uniform cross-sections and tapered cross-sections and things like that. Uh, and then once you've defined, uh, defined all of that, you can generate geometry for certain types of uh, geometry natively, you know, solid circular cross-sections, solid rectangles, uh, I-beams, uh, or even some user-defined cross-sections. 
uh, and you could also, or you could apply uh, imported geometry. So Adam's solver and Adam's post processor will then figure out where all the vertices on the shell from your imported geometry need to go to bend the way the center line is. And then there's finally there are some results. There's uh, some XY plots of uh, stress and strain recovery. Uh, and there's uh, also internal loads uh, at each of the nodes and, and uh, forces and excuse me, internal loads and, and positions at each of the nodes that can be tracked automatically. And you can just put a marker on there and make requests on those markers too, wherever you like. Continuing the theme of nonlinear uh, integration, we have the Adams Coast Simulation interface. And the Adams Coast Simulation interface is uh, essentially a tool that we put together that is general in purpose to connect to other tools, but uh, in this first release, it is uh, uh, you know initial implementation here. It is uh, doing cold simulation between Adams and Mark. In future releases, we'll be able to add it to do cold simulation with other tools. But for this release, so we're starting with Adams and Mark. Uh, folks have been doing Adams and Mark co simulation um, in recent years. Uh, and they've been doing that with maybe services written code and uh, uh, code that they have to adapt each time for different models and things like this, uh, or custom authored code of other sorts. And that essentially is forming the glue between the Adams, uh, the Adams job and the Mark job. In this project, we basically put this into the product and alleviated the need to write code. We handle all that kind of thing behind the scenes. Um, it works based on the TCP IP connection, which means we can support multiple operating systems. So the Adams model could be on a Windows laptop, and the Mark model could be on a, a Linux machine, for example. Uh, and it supports uh, an Adams process, one Adams model, one Adams solver job interacting with one or more Mark solver jobs. So you could have multiple Mark bodies represented in your Adams model, and then the co simulation will call out to each of those different processes. And there really are no modeling limitations within Adams or Mark. Uh, so no limitation on Adams object types or Mark uh, element types or anything like that. So, you know, this is very important for handling nonlinear uh, nonlinear bodies that are maybe geometric and material nonlinearities, uh, or some kinds of contact nonlinearities that are happening within the model itself, self-contact, those kinds of things within the flexible body itself, the Mark body itself. Mark is obviously very well known for viscoelastic modeling and some of its capabilities to do uh, remeshing during the simulation. And, uh, uh, and contact. So those are a lot of the applications for people, types of applications people want to uh, use this tool for. Uh, so you can think of, again, a lot of you know, nice rubber materials like suspension bushings, engine mounts, and seals. Uh, but really, you know, it's very wide open, any, any combination of Adams and Mark models. Uh, a very simple example shows here a rubber block uh, and uh, connecting two rigid blocks, uh, actually three rigid blocks, two of which are connected between some springs, and then there's a rubber block here, a uh, uh, very soft piece of rubber block in this model of Mark, obviously. Another thing I point out here is uh, the ability to do co-animation. So the, the way post-processing works with this co-simulation is you do XY plotting and animation of the atoms results in the Adams post processor and the mark results in your mark post processor like Mentat. Uh, but for example, in Adams, you would see an empty space here where the mark block is. And in the mark uh, pre and post processor, you see the mark block and none of the Adams things. But what you see happening to those parts is basically based on uh, their relationships to each other and how they're influencing each other. What I'm showing here in this animation, on the other hand, is a co-animation. So we do have the uh, ability to export Adam's results uh, and the mark result files. Uh, the, the T16 file is, is natively read by a third-party tool called uh, CEI Insight. And so that tool will allow us to do a co-animation like this, too, if you want to go that far. So you can export Adam's results now. This is just a, a new feature we had to the post-processor for any Adam's model. It doesn't have to be co-simulation. Any Adam's model, we can export the Adam's results uh, from that analysis into a format uh, that the uh, tool CI Insight will be able to consume. So you could do these kinds of uh, co-animations. Here's another example. Uh, showing a nonlinear bushing. Uh, 
Uh, so I talked about uh, you know, self-contact and some of these things can be important in these uh, uh, highly deformable uh, rubber materials that uh, people like to model with Mark. Looking at the overall workflow, I'll describe a little bit more about how this works. You, you prepare both your Adams and your Mark model to interact with each other. Basically, there's an Adams model, there's a Mark model, and then there's a configuration file that sits in between them. We have a little GUI that helps you set up that configuration file, and primarily what you're doing in that GUI is defining the interaction points between the models. So you're defining which markers and atoms will control which rigid surfaces in Mark. So atoms will be sending, as we show here in the simulation step, position and velocity data of uh, of, of the markers that you, you selected, and then those, each of those markers will have uh, paired with it a rigid surface in mark, which will push on things in mark and pull on things in mark, and mark will give us the force response back to atoms. And that's, that's the kind of data that's exchanged between the models during co-simulation. And then in the end, we, as I mentioned on the previous slide, we'll, we'll plot results, uh, both uh, XY plots and animated kind of results, uh, in each of the tools separately, Adams or uh, Mentat, for example, from Mark, and then co-animate. We can co-animate through uh, uh, through the CEI Insight interface that I was describing earlier. In this case, this is a, an example here of uh, this all-terrain vehicle hitting an obstacle, and we've modeled the one of the control arms where it hits this wheel, uh, one of the control arms in Mark, and then we can see the control arm deforming and going into plastic and into the plastic regime, which of course with something like an MNF file would, would not give you a very accurate result at that point. It wouldn't, wouldn't really be possible to do that kind of analysis to look for buckling like this. Okay, moving on to Adams Machinery Enhancements. Uh, Adams Machinery, this release is featuring the new module for CAMS. It basically provides three key pieces of functionality that makes it a lot faster and easier to model CAM follower systems. The first is you can build the follower motion, a desired follower motion. You know, you can either import that with a set of points or you can use um, a parameterized function, basically, uh, you know, a concatenation of several functions, if you like, parameterized such that you could even optimize that follower motion to, say, optimize it for uh, minimal acceleration, minimal jerk, which uh, may be desired and uh, oftentimes is desired in a cam follower system to avoid liftoff. Uh, if you already ha and then from that motion, or you know, from the motion you put in directly, or from the, the motion you've derived in this regard and optimized, you can der uh, then from that derive a cam profile that would uh, achieve that motion. If you already have the cam profile, you could just start there, give it the cam profile, and say, now please go do the modeling automation to create the objects and atoms I need, the constraints, the parts, and the connection. And that connection can be handled. Uh, either in 2D or 3D and either with a, a constraint, something like a point-to-curve constraint, uh, to keep the follower tip on the uh, uh, on the cam profile curve, or we can use contact, full 3D contact, so you could allow lift off and uh, uh, more, uh, you know, have a more realistic, uh, more realistic model in that case. And, and one of the real big advantages of this and the things that makes the pre-processing faster is that we can cut grooves. Uh, you know, Adams will take care, Adams Machinery will take care of building this geometry, you know, cutting grooves in the geometry is especially difficult, uh, even for very skilled Adams users trying to create these, uh, you know, if you need 3D contact especially, creating these grooves here to be used for 3D contact. But uh, also, again, like I say, it takes care of uh, any, uh, you know, springs are going to be, pre you know, using, uh, uh, employed to preload the system and try to keep the cam on the follower, excuse me, the follower on the cam. Um, and just building all the other um, you know, mounts and joints and contacts and things. So a lot of applications in the machinery world, a lot of ma applications in, in many fields, but a lot of applications, especially in the general machinery world, for CAMs. There's this is a listing of the types of CAMs that we support: the disc cam, a uh, group a disc cam with a slotted groove on the side, or the uh, cylindrical barrel cam here. And there's a number of different configurations available for the follower in terms of, uh, you know, whether it's inline or offset, if it translates pivots, and what kind of follower end we have. Uh, a few fun movies of uh, the Adams Machinery cam module in action. This is a, a ceiling mechanism where we've got a uh, disc cam rotating on shaft here uh, that's actuating, as we pull back here, actuating the, uh, the ceiling mechanism in a broader sense. It's hooked up here with uh, an Adams Machinery motor. 
And this is an indexing machine. This one has two different cams in it. It's got a uh, barrel cam uh, underneath the table, and above the table, it's got a, uh, a disc cam controlling the motion of the, uh, you know, the mechanism in both, uh, you know, both axes there, both components of the mechanism, I should say. Moving on to Adams Machinery Bearing, there have been a few improvements in Adams Machinery Bearing. Uh, one of them is the Adams Machinery uh, Bearing has a uh, duty cycle life option now. Previously, bearing service life was predicted for the detailed model at each time step discreetly. So essentially, at every time step, it would look at the load and speed that Adams was putting on the bearing and tell you how long it would predict the bearing could last at that particular point, load and speed. A lot of users say, well, we'd like to build our duty cycles and make our atom simulations reflect our duty cycles. So I'd really like to see how long the bearing could live through the life of that simulation. Or more complicated, like the example I show here, through you know a, a certain chunks of that simulation, maybe zero to one, I've got some startup transients that I don't really care to have. Uh, well, one time one to five is important, and then you know, doing some more transitioning, then time, time nine to 10 is important. And not only do I need to be able to see how long I can last doing that once, but hey, this is a bearing, it's in a piece of machinery, it's going to be used over and over, so we add the number of repeat sections, build out a really complete duty cycle, and then provide for each bearing a single service life answer. Uh, ready, moving along to CAD interoperability. Uh, this is an Adams View uh, update here, whereby we have uh, updated the tools that are doing CAD interoperability, letting us import uh, versions of you know, native CAD files. So we now support um, newer versions of most of these uh, most of these formats. Uh, we also now support for the very first time the JT format, going with the JT Open flavor of JT. Uh, that's a, uh, been a, uh, a key customer request we've had for some time now, uh, and uh, glad that we can support that now. Uh, also, um, something we've heard a lot of requests for is uh, the Creo 2 support. So in the Pro-E world, we're now supporting Creo 2, but a few version updates to newer versions uh, across the board here, really. Okay, with that, I will turn it over to Ingo to cover uh, vehicle vertical improvements. Hello, everybody. Um, in the 2014 release, uh, we focused on two main areas. One is the tire and road interaction, and the other one is uh, adding uh, full vehicle events. On the road and tire interaction side, uh, one of the uh, first enhancements we uh, performed is to uh, adopt the Cozy Tire Interface, or short CTI. Uh, this will bring us uh, an improved support for moving roads. It allows us to um, better support high fidelity soft soil analyses. Uh, in combination with the soft cell options out of F-Tire. Um, it will allow for uh, multi-part tire road contacts, which I will get to in a couple of examples later. And it will uh, bring us the potential for increased performance, especially when we go beyond uh, four tires that, that are in a typical vehicle, a passenger vehicle uh, these days. Um, on the um, Pre- and post-processing side, we um, added the uh, animation support for F-Tire. As you can see in these little animations here, uh, it's now possible to see the um, F-Tire being animated, uh, embedded in the, in the full uh, Adams uh, animation. So in the lower animation, you see the tire um, deflecting. You see the uh, force distribution in the, in the contact patch. Uh, you can also turn on the rim from the FPIA file, as well as the uh, road, visualize the road patch. And you can do this either embedded or you can do this side by side with the um, Adams animation. A typical application for these kind of things would be ride durability and NVH. Um, talking about this multi-point, uh, con or multi-road contact, um, this opens the door for applications like uh, transporting uh, vehicles on cars or trains where you may be using certain you know, clamping devices to keep the uh, tire uh, connected to the, to the um, platform of the, of the train or of the, of the uh, truck. Um, another application would be um, better support for moving roads, um, where you, for example, unload cars from a ship and you want to uh, investigate the transition between the different um, you know, road segments, like the ship as one segment, uh, 
the ramp as a second segment and then the, the ground uh, surface as a, as a third one. Or another example would be uh, driving over a pontoon bridge where each of the segments of the pontoon bridge is its own um, road um, definition and you, you need to be able to run uh, these events with you know one tire and multiple roads. Um, the tire data fitting tool that we had uh, introduced in 2012 um, was uh, significantly uh, improved. Um, before uh, the 2014 release, we only had a um, optimizer for the fitting that would support the force and moment characteristics in a steady state regime. For this release, we now added uh, support for uh, other, ba other basic properties like the uh, loaded radius, the rolling radius, the re relaxation length, and the contact patch geometry. Um, and both of those things, the force and moment, as well as the basic properties, uh, are being done in steady state. Um, another enhancement we did is to support also now the dynamic characteristics for enveloping and bell dynamics. Um, for that, uh, for, for those fits, we need to um, run uh, small tire test rig uh, analyses, and we can do so in parallel uh, to in increase performance. And um, with that all uh, combined, uh, we now uh, support all of the uh, modeling characteristics and capabilities in the PEC 2002 model uh, now in the, t in the tire data fitting tool. On the full vehicle event side, we added three uh, additional events, and they all can be grouped together as uh, either accident reconstruction or um, security device uh, design um, related uh, events. Um, they all um, role stability uh, events, that's uh, how we also classified it in, in the menus. And in this example, you see a, a lateral sandbed slide. Uh, the name already indicates that the um, soil uh, can can be soft, it can be a sand or uh, another type uh, of soft soil uh, in, in addition to rigid. Uh, you have some other um, typical inputs to the event like the, um, the, the lateral velocity or the tilt angle or friction coefficient. coefficient. Um, for this particular event, we moved uh, the tilt table test rig out of the uh, truck plug-in and uh, moved it into the standard car product um, to give you uh, an, an easier uh, access to the capability. Another um, event that we added for this release is the um, embankment. Um, here we uh, allow the car to drive um, you know, either left or right uh, down an embankment that can either be uh, rigid in the embanked area or in the lower uh, platform. Uh, or soft. Uh, we, here again we have a selection of different uh, predefined soft soil properties that you can choose from. Other parameters for this event are the velocities, um, the steering uh, characteristics, how, how you, uh, you know, counteract the disturbance. Um, we can uh, introduce an um, optional rollover bar that is embedded in the embankment uh, but rigid to force a rollover to happen. As you can see in this example, it does not. Um, is a, a corkscrew ramp, which is basically um, just driving the car on one side, either left or right, uh, up a ramp, and then uh, force a rollover uh, that way. Um, we have a set of predefined ramps with two segments or three segments or one segment with different heights already in the um, road database, um, but you can also use the uh, user-defined ramp option where you define the length and the height of two segments uh, individually. Um, and typically other um, inputs would be, again, uh, velocities or, you know, the gear position or how do you want to uh, perform the straight setup. On the solver side, or let me say on the vertical solver side, we made an effort to um, uh, optimize our user subroutines. And the goal here was to um, uh, improve the scalability of the solution. And as you can see in a little graph here, um, 
you know, we accomplished it, although uh, I, I don't think we're, we're just done yet. Um, typical, um, you know, passenger vehicle with uh, an F tire or a Tech 2002 tire now scales in the magnitude of um, two to two and a half times when using four or eight threads versus a single thread operation. Uh, this is an improvement over 2013, as you can see, where we had uh, an actual uh, slowdown uh, beyond four threads, which was caused by the overhead of the thread management versus the um, performance of the, of the parallel uh, execution. The things we um, already um, optimized were the, um, the single, the vector, and the general forces, the field object, the motion object, uh, couplers, and the GSE. And for uh, future releases, we still plan to do the same for uh, requests, uh, variables, and differential equation subroutines. On the smart driver side, uh, we did some fine tuning on things that we had started in the 2013 release already. Um, the open loop support was improved so that now you can uh, define um, events that uh, go forward and backward and any arbitrary combination of, of those. Uh, this is important for uh, turn events like a three-point turn or you know parking maneuver um, investigation. We also added um, support for going backwards, simple and automatic powertrain options that were introduced in the previous release. Uh, for the speed profile, um, again, we implemented something that we had done for the steering um, profile already in, in the previous release, which is the interpolation of the target. Um, so now, as you can see in the graph in the upper right, um, target acceleration is now uh, a smooth and continuous uh, signal as opposed to uh, some zigzag uh, option, which makes for uh, smoother throttle and brake signals. You won't see as often this hunting effect where throttle and brake um, basically interchange with each other, uh, and that uh, obviously uh, improves robustness and, and improves the uh, result accuracy. For the uh, power base shifting that we also introduced in the previous release, we made some fine tuning to reduce hunting. And we added a, an, uh, the capability to do uh, what we call gear skip shifting, which means that uh, upon a, um, a heavy braking maneuver, um, you will be able, or the, the controller is now able to um, shift through from like the sixth gear to the second or first gear immediately without having to go through the uh, intermediate gears uh, through that simulation. Last but not least, um, to improve the uh, speed profile targets, for the um, smart driver events, we added the possibility to include stabilizer bar effect and load transfer um, for the uh, internal uh, vehicle model that's being used by smart driver to pre-calculate the, the speed profile. Here's an example of um, the, a car doing a three-point turn, and uh, you know this this event is now possible using one driver control file, you know, whether it's a DCF or an XML variant, doesn't matter. But in the past, you would have to, you would have to um, somehow concatenate uh, um, different results, snippets from, from different events and uh, try to, um, you know, uh, merge those together in, in order to uh, produce an animation like this. Other updates we did is uh, we added the DOE support for uh, other uh, tire models like the PEC MC and the PEC Time. We already had this kind of support for the PEC 2002. Uh, this allows you to um, parameterize your uh, tire property file and then expose those parameters in the user interface in order to select these uh, properties for uh, Adam's Insight um, um, parameters uh, and uh, also object objective functions. On the car side, we added a uh, new uh, user-defined element, UDE, for defining contacts. Um, this allows you to, um, well, predefine the uh, contact pair already in the template builder. So you could have, um, you know, one contact in, in one template, uh, one contact uh, object in one 
and then a different one in, a, in, in another co uh, uh, template and use the new uh, contact geology communicator to automatically set up this or to do the pairing of these two objects. Examples here would be, um, you know, the engine uh, block um, maybe hitting uh, something in the in the chassis frame, or um, the underbody of a car uh, getting in contact with the road. The road is a special uh, contact pair object that we introduced uh, for this as well. Um, and as I said, uh, we had to extend the set of uh, communicator uh, options that you have by adding this contact geometry. Uh, so that uh, you know this pre-definition can be taken care of in a template builder and doesn't have to be repeated in the standard user interface all the time. Okay, this is Anthony again. I'll cover the last two uh, items on this one. Uh, within Atom Solver, there have been some uh, an extension to the native contact uh, definitions that we have that allow cylinder to cylinder contact. So both cylinders can be handled uh, analytically. Those can be external contacts or uh, like a pin and hole contact. Prior to that, only one cylinder uh, of a pair could be handled analytically, and the other would uh, necessarily have to be tessellated. So now you can get smoother, faster results, basically, with uh, cylinder to cylinder contact. Within uh, Adams Controls and Mechatronics, there have been uh, a few uh, enhancements here related to our uh, continuing support for FMI. Uh, so, uh, lockup interface uh, standard has come out with a version two. Uh, relatively recently this year, and we support that. Uh, so that means you can export uh, Adams FMUs in uh, uh, FMI version 2, or you can import uh, FMUs from uh, FMI compliant tools that were exported as uh, version 2 for co-simulation. Uh, we also have added an FMU inspection capability. Uh, so this means when you uh, um, are co-stimulating with an FMU uh, and between it and atoms and you don't might not know some things about the FMU, uh, certain important things like the order of the inputs and output signals are especially, that can be uh, uh, that can be looked up directly from the GUI rather than having to tech talk to the FMU author or try to figure it out from the FMU file itself. Uh, and then uh, finally we have what's called output rate control uh, on atoms generated FMUs. That means we can basically set the frequency with which the Adams FMU will write out output files and write to output files, generate output steps for those output files. We can specify that frequency relative to the overall co-simulation data exchange frequency. So if you want the Adams FMU to be writing out results uh, more frequently than the Adams model and the uh, uh, the other FMI model, the other FMU uh, are, tra are trading data, you can do that, or less frequently if, if that's your choice too, so it's just a, a simple ratio you can apply. Okay, with that I will turn it over to Yijin to a uh, few other uh, closing topics and get the Q&A session going. Okay, thank you very much Anthony and Ingo for your very informative, pr uh, informative presentation. Uh, so Adams 2014 will be um, available at the end of August, and uh, we are very excited about it, about this uh, new release and its new and the new features that comes with this new release. Uh, so if you have any question uh, regarding um, like how to implement those uh, new functionalities, or uh, if you have any uh, questions about Adams, you can type them down in the Q and A window, and then we will have them answered. Uh, if some of the questions cannot be answered due to the time limit, we will follow up by email. And um, if you want a copy of today's presentation, so all of you will get a recording for today's webinar. And if you want a copy of today's presentation, a PDF version, you can send the email to me, egen.fan at msdsoftware.com um, with your request. Okay, uh, I think now we can go to the, go to the Q&A session.